glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified unto me and I unto the world for neither circumcision is anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature if any and as many as shall walk by this rule peace upon them and mercy upon the new Israel of God. It's a very powerful passage. But what Paul is talking about is a new approach to life and to even experiences like this that relates to Christian faith, what I call the theology of Christian faith. Typically, when we talk, when we come to these type of circumstances, someone in my position is charged to do what is called a eulogy. It comes from a Greek word, eulogeo, which means to speak well. And the traditional approach to that is to find good things that you know of and point out all the good stuff about a person. And one of the things that, that I know is always true, every memorial service that I've ever been to, uh, preachers never fail to put the person in heaven, <laughs> regardless of how they lived. But that's not our task. But yet this moment in Danny's life was very, it was a very complex life. And this moment has, be, has been made simple and simplified if we understand the principles of Christian faith. I remember when we talk about the traditional approach to how we often, you know, would get up and say so many great and wonderful things about the person. And I'm reminded of the story of the preacher that was doing just that. Uh, the wife, the, the mother, and the children were sitting on the front row and, and he was just pouring it on, giving all the accol accolades and all of those things. And after a while, the wife kind of got a little fed up with it. She touched her daughter and said, I want you to go up and look in that box and see if that's your daddy. <laughs> Maybe we've come to the far wrong funeral. <laughs> the point is, in this passage, Paul is, is speaking against the background uh, of what would normally be that kind of approach where Paul talks about glorying in the flesh, glorying in someone's humanness. He said that rule doesn't apply anymore. The point is, against the background of this text were a group of Jewish converts to the Christian faith. We call them Judaizers. They were those who came out of the Jewish religion and wanted to impose law keeping upon Gentiles. They were advocating in order for Gentiles to be saved, they had to first become keepers of the Jewish law. They had to observe the ritualism and the ceremonialism and the Jewish Sabbath day. All of that was being imposed by these Judaizers. And Paul is saying that these people are trying to gain converts to this notion because in Christianity, salvation is by grace through faith plus and minus nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Paul in this text is going to talk about what really counts at a time like this. All right, now. He said there are those who want to glory in your humanness because they want to glory in their own humanness. Yes, sir. He said, but God forbids that I glory. And then he goes on to say that in Christ, neither circumcision or uncircumcision don't count at all. No. That is, your ritual, your religious credentials don't count. It matters not how religious you were. It matters not about your moral. Notice the idea of the keeping of law. He said that don't count anymore. In other words, moral achievements don't matter, don't accomplish anything as it relates to your rightness with God. He said the only thing that, that, that matters now 
is the cross of Christ. Yes, sir. Amen. And if, if you take any other approach, you have minimized the meaning and true meaning of what happened at Calvary. Are you following me? You see, in Christ, there's no graduations. All right. You know, in other words, he said that rituals and, 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 and rule orientation, he said that don't count anymore. Not when it comes to righteousness. Stop. Not when it comes to having a right relationship with God. Stop. He said the second thing in verse 8, he said there is no reason, there is no room in this system for boasting. That's right. He said the only reason for boasting, the only, only occasion that you would have for boasting is only in the accomplishment of the cross. Yes. Because Christ died for all of us. Christ died for Danny Ray's sins. Yes, he did. You know, whatever Danny Ray didn't quite understand, Christ died for it. Yes, sir. Whatever Danny Ray didn't accomplish in terms of his moral achievement, Christ died for it. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? In other words, he says the cross, he said, that's why I glory, because it is because of the cross that... The cross crucified the world to me, and I unto the world. All of that was accomplished in the cross of Christ. Yes, sir. And that's why in that in that story, mm -hmm. you see, we can't even brag brag about tenure. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been preaching the gospel for over forty five years. Forty five years I've been in the faith, but ain't that that ain't nothing to brag about. Mm -hmm. I can't even brag about anything I've accomplished as it relates to that because God doesn't love me now any more than he loved me when I first obeyed the gospel. God loved me then and he still loves me. And so it matters not how all of the moral achievements that I may accomplish is only because it's only due to my desire to experience the life of God that's promised in the gospel, but it has no bearing upon my eternal salvation. Understand that. And so what does matter? In other words, graduations in Christ don't matter. Graduating from the new convert class, that don't count. You know, how long you've been in the church, how long you've been in the faith, that don't count. You know, Christ said that, were, that was a parable where Christ went into the marketplace. He said, man went in the marketplace and he called some individuals into his vineyard. He called some at, in early morning. And they went in, then he came back at noon and found people standing idle and said, come into my vineyard and work. And they went and, and, and came in at noon. And then he came back at the end of the day. Came back at five o'clock, pay time. And he called the, called the same people, come on in. And they came in and at the end of the day, he gave them all the same. <laughs> he gave them all the same. Because there are no graduations. There are no graduation ceremonies in Christ because the cross means that salvation is by grace is unmerited is unmerited and therefore is not based upon your disposition is based upon your position and the Bible says if any person is in Christ they are a new creation so old things are passed away and behold everything else has become new yes I've had debates with with Danny about certain things about certain commitments of his life I, I've debated when you, that guy read that scripture, First, first Timothy 6 and verse 17, where uh, it says, charge them that are rich. Danny believed in that. He didn't read the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he believed in the first part, and he would argue, and he would argue it. He would yes, argue it with me. Yes, sir. You know, but the point is, whether he understood it perfectly or not, it matters not, because he was a new creature. You know, Paul says circumcision, not uncircumcision, avails anything but a new creation. And one thing that's undisputed about my brother that lays in this casket today, the three things that really matter, number one is his faith. Danny always insisted on being brother Danny. That's right, he, he would call brother Danny. And he made sure that you knew that he was brother Danny. Isn't that right? You know, he never, he never wavered, you know, in terms of his commitment to, to being uh, committed to the church. He never wavered in that, you know, and, and, and that's what commitment to Christ is, is commitment to the body of Christ, is commitment to the word of God, is commitment to the fellowship of believers. And when you're committed to that, the Bible says that God does not charge your sins to your account. Now, when a person forfeits that commitment, the Bible said they forfeit the grace of God. Don't let nobody tell you that once you're saved, you can never be lost. Don't believe that. Just as you just as you can commit yourself, just as you can believe, you can start unbelieving. You can discommit your uncommit yourself. But the point is, the three things that matters today 
is his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, his, his hope in eternal life, and his love for all of the brethren. And then he never forsook that. May God bless you.